good afternoon and welcome back to the channel. Those of you that watch regularly will know I'm about to upgrade my BMW R1250 GSTE for a brand new BMW R1250 Adventure Exclusive TE. Uh, that happens in a couple of weeks time on the 1st of September uh, and I'm looking forward to it. You'll also know if you've watched this for a while that I asked you for ideas about what I should use as the luggage system this time, having used Vario panniers on my R1250 GS and you can see my review of the Vario panniers up here but this time I wanted to move to a new uh, luggage system. You'll know from the title of this video that I've pretty much decided with a bit of a twist on the Boomot Defender Evo system so if you're interested in knowing why I've gone for that some of the features of it now that I've actually got it here waiting for the bike then you should continue watching this video. Okay, so uh, you'll know that some of my deliberations were around the different types of aluminium uh, luggage systems and I'd uh, previously really settled on the Givy Trekker Outback system but part of the reason that I was really edging towards that one is I wanted the large top box, the 58 litre mammoth top box which enables you to put two helmets, two full face helmets side by side should you need to and of course gives you extra room and all those other things anyway. Um, the downside of any of the aluminium systems that I know of is that you can't get two full face helmets in. So even if you go for the 45 litre Boomot, this is the 39 litre with the edging taken out for the exhaust pipe. But if you go for the 45 litre one, then you still can't get a full face helmet into that. You can of course get a full face helmet into most of the top boxes, including the relatively tiny BMW one, which of course is the Touratech um, manufactured item um, but you can't get two in and, and part of my deliberations were being able to get two. All of that said I've actually gone for the Boomot system which you can't get two full face helmets in but you'll see a little bit of a twist later on that I've gone for but anyway why did I go for the Boomot system? This is the Boomot 39 litre uh, side case and this one is for the right hand side of the machine. So on the right hand side of the machine, you've got the exhaust pipe on the BMW R 1250 GS and the GS uh, Adventure actually. So, um, but part of the things that really drove me towards this system was many of you commented that it was a very, very good system. You were really happy with yours. My issue really was around the fact that the previous model, the Defender, was very utilitarian, very agricultural. It was very square. It, it had square corners. Um, it did really look like three oblong rectangular boxes. Um, but what they've now done with the uh, Boomot Defender Evo system is they've now put these profiled edges in. They've rounded the edges here on the on the tops of the panniers um, and they've given much more, I think, design uh, to, to the system. The other thing that I particularly like about it is that it does slot directly onto the BMW racking. I'll call it the scaffolding from now on, but you know what I mean, the, the, the scaffolding on the side of the bike. So that was, a, that was an important consideration. Some of the other considerations that I made, the fabrication of these boxes are two millimeter aluminium. If you look at the majority of the others, whether it be SW Motec or whether it be the uh, Givy Trekker Outbacks, is they are one and a half mil. Now, there's pros and cons to both of those. The pro is that it's much stronger and it's, it's much more robust. The downside of it is, is, of course, it must start heavier than its equivalent in one and a half millimeters. The other thing that I like about the Boomot um, is that all of the joints inside and all along the side, bottom, everywhere, are TIG welded, nice TIG welding, aluminium TIG welding. Um, and you can see that from some of these still images that I've taken. And what that results in is, yes, you have possible ingress from some of the screws and bolts that hold the various fittings on, but you do at least have 
what they claim to be a water and dust proof box and that's also achieved which we'll go into in a minute by the gasket system that they use on the lid. So this is the 39 litre. The beauty of this is that because it's designed for the BMW system and you therefore have this cutaway here for the exhaust, um, you're looking at me forward from the bike, so this is the right hand pannier, is from here upwards is exactly the same as the 45 litre one. So unlike some of the other boxes which are oblong, rectangular, call them what you like, uh, cubed boxes. If you take, for example, the Givy system, that has the rack that over overlaps the exhaust. So the box on this side is actually a smaller box. I think it's a 37 and a 45 on here. Whereas this is actually shaped. So you can imagine that the, the SW Motec or the uh, Givy would go straight up here. Um, so you sort of look a little bit lopsided when you look at the back of the bike, although width-wise it does even it out. Um, one of the other things as well that I like about the Boomot system, I don't like the key. I think the key is a little bit, uh, well, Mickey Mouse to be perfectly honest. I'm not sure how many levers it's got, but it's probably only three levers. But at the end of the day, if a criminal wants to take your luggage, they're going to take your luggage, believe me. Um, but the good thing about it is that they are all keyed alike. So I have three keys on the case, I have three keys on the other case, or, or three locks I should say on the other case, um, and I have two locks on the top box and one on the toolbox. So in total there is a very quick addition, we've got something like nine locks. That one key fits every single one of the locks, so they're all keyed alike from the dealer, which by the way was Adventure Bike Shop in the UK, but you can equally go on Boomot's website and take a look at that too. And I'll, I'll put the links to all of the websites and, and everything else down at the bottom, and we'll go through the costs a little bit later on. But as I say, the great thing is I only need carry one key, and I know that this will fit all of my all of my luggage pieces that I've bought from Boomot. Now, one of the other things that I really like is the fact that whilst most of the pannier boxes that you'll see have two locks, one on this face and one here on the back face, that's normally because the second lock is so that you can undo it and remove the lid when you want to actually load the, the luggage system up. With the Boomot system it's got a much more substantial reason. So let me undo the back one first and then you'll see me here unlock the front one or undo the front one. Um, very strong locks. Uh, most of the ones that I've looked at are very, very strong. But one of the things I really like about the Boomot one is when I lift it up off its rest here, I've actually got a piece here that I can drop it down on. So it's not going to actually hit the powder coating. And this is powder coated, by the way, not spray painted. So again, that's quite a nice feature of this box. But now if you imagine that you're actually, as I say, looking at the front of the bike, so this is the rear of the bike, I'm traveling towards you, then this particular case, and the other case in fact, open from the inside outwards. And that, for me, is a very, very nice feature. Why do I think it's such a nice feature? Well, first and foremost, we've got a friction uh, hinge on it. So it means that I can put this wherever I like, and it will sit at that position. So there's no danger of the wind slamming that down on your fingers. There's no danger when you've got it up right here of the lid working its way sideways and maybe damaging the hinge. So it opens sideways. Now, if I bring this box very slightly towards me, you'll also see that it goes all the way down and pretty much flat. Now, I could put something across here to make a small table, but more important to me, not with this box, but with the, with the left-hand box, in fact, is that how many times have you actually pulled up by the side of the road, got yourself a coffee or a burger at one of the, the roadside stalls, and you've got the bike on the side stand, there's nowhere to stand anything. You want to change your GoPro batteries, you want to be doing stuff around the place, but you've got nowhere to put your drink um, because the bike is just at that awkward level. With this pannier system on, of course, and the bike leant over, if you imagine this the other side, you can have the lid at maybe that angle, and with the bike leant over, we'll pretend it leans the other way, with the bike leant over like so, we've now got a flat surface in which to put all of that. So it might seem trivial, but for me it's, it's a relatively important, uh, relatively important point. 
Now let's just, oh, just before we close that, here we can see, and I've got some stills here to show you as well, a very flat 10 millimeter um, ledge here, which is what makes this thing waterproof. We'll see that there are some welding marks in the corners, but they grind those flat, certainly as flat as they need to. But most importantly, we have a gasket here. So if we take a look all the way along this face and all the way around the lid, we've got a gasket and that gasket isn't just a, a straightforward bit of fiber or, or bit of rubber or, or, or just a normal seal. It is actually identical to the seals that you have on your car doors and your car doors have been using those seals for quite some time to actually waterproof the, the car. So it's got great great waterproof and dust proofing in that and if we look as we close it you may or may not quite be able to see but it does absolutely sponge down and then when I put this over and latch it down it squeezes it even more and obviously when I put this backside one on and pull that one down we're now completely sandwiched down tight non-rattling waterproof and fitted if we now turn the box round a little bit so that you can see the uh, fitting of the of the box, as I say, this is the right hand one over the exhaust. But here we've got the locking mechanism at the top and it's unlocked at the moment. So if I lift that up, you can see that down here I've got, I think it's probably um, aluminium or stainless. It's certainly very, very robust. But literally we would tip the box away from the bike, drop that onto the bottom of the scaffolding run this onto the top of the scaffolding and then as we bring this down you'll see that we come down here and the bar for the top of the scaffolding will be through here. Lock that with the key, this can't come up, your box is then locked onto the unit. The other thing that I like about this is we've got these corner pads here. Now I do like, so I'm not going to profess that everything about this box is, is the best, but I, I think I'm, I'm happy anyway with my purchases. But what I do like about the Jivy box, um, and I think the Motec and the Touratec BMW ones have the same, is they have bars that come across here. Now the real benefit of those bars is the fact that um, of course you can use them as lashing, but more importantly it does give you something to carry the box by. Now you can carry the box by holding it underneath these locks, but I do fear that if you have the lock undone, of course, you're just going to end up flicking the lock or whatever else. So it certainly would be nice if we had something to carry the box with. Now if we actually look at the top of the box here, you'll see we've got four lashing points. And I imagine those are perfectly strong, but I just might have been nice to have seen some bars going across. All of that said, if we actually open the box here, what I've actually done as well is I've bought with my boxes all of the accessories that I could possibly buy. And this particular box has those accessories in it. So let me just remove them, put them down here on the side and then we'll go through them piece by piece. So from the perspective of, there we go. So from the perspective of actually having no um, rods here by which to carry it, what I have done is I've bought the carrying handle for the pannier. So it's just simply two Y-shaped pieces, it's webbing and the actual uh, unit itself here comes with four extra long screws, four washers which will go through onto the top of the webbing strap there and if we close the lid I can show you exactly where that goes. Again this is the inside nearest the bike, this is the outside away from the bike so I'm travelling towards you but this handle would actually fit here, here, just spin the box around a little bit, here, here, here and here. So we'll show you this fitting in a minute, but that would literally sit across there like that, giving you a carrying strap in the middle. So that's the carrying strap. Um, again, it's a Boomot accessory. I also bought some Boomot 3M reflectors. So again, you're looking at the box now as if I'm traveling towards you. And in the UK, by law, 
we can only show white light to the rear and red light, sorry, white light to the front and red light to the rear. So I bought these, again, they are Boomop, but they're patently 3M, and that will actually sit on that face just there, like so, and we'll show you that a little bit later too. And then if I spin the box around, so that you're now looking at me going away from you, and I have this red one, which again will go down here and show a red light to the rear. So again, I, as you know, I'm all about visibility. So that's a couple more of the accessories that I bought. And inside the box, so again, I'm just gonna spin it around. I do apologize for all the spinning of the box. But if we now open the box fully, um, we also have bought two bags. So this bag here is the Boomot 45 litre, because as I've said to you, although the two boxes are different capacities, this one being 39 litre and the other one being 45, the lids are identical. So this is the 45 litre, I have two of these, 45 litre um, in a in a lid bags. And if I just unzip that, it's got a, obviously the map pouches on the front, but inside for a lid bag, what you're really needing are all of these pockets. And if you take a look, there's lots of compartment pockets there which will allow you to put any of your documents or anything that you may need to get quick access to inside the lid. Now, a lot of people may well look at that and say, well, that's all well and good, Nick, but when that's sat in the lid, like so, you could just close that and it may well just fall out. Well, that obviously wouldn't be the case because it comes with retaining strap. So the retaining strap literally, again, has these Y-shaped attachments with little brackets on the end here, and we'll show you those being fitted later on. But basically, again, uh, if we look at this for where the handle fits, which is here, 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 and here, the four points for this to fit to are here, 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 and here. So we'll show you those, as I say, fitting them later on. What I also bought was the inner bag. So here is the inner bag. Again, these are all made of Cordura. They're all Boomop bags, so they're available as accessories from Boomop. And this particular one fits the 39 litre case. And if we can look very carefully, hopefully you can see that, if I show you at the end, it is actually notched. Um, and that one allows for the for the notch of the box here where the where the exhaust is. The other inner bag is is slightly different and is 45 litre. So so that's the inner bag, the inner lid bag, the retaining straps, the reflector strips, the carrying handle, and all of that came from Boomot as Boomot accessories. And then lastly which I thought I would add to, but is not a genuine Boomot accessory, is this rubber matting. Now, this is uh, from a guy on eBay, Precision Rubber or something. Again, I'll, I'll stick a link down in the description to it. But I bought the three pieces for this. So this is the, this is the uh, side case, two of these, the side case uh, cover for the top, so if you lash anything to it, you're not going to damage the, the finish of the boxes. It's going to sit against this, this rubber, which is precision cut and got an adhesive on the back. And again, we'll show you that being fitted later, but effectively, it'll fit custom fitted onto the pannier like so. And we've got one for the top box as well. So that's the pannier. I'm not going to show you the squared off pannier because the features are identical. It's just a, 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 an oblong or rectangular box rather than having this cutaway. The, the rest of the features are identical, but we will show you the top box. Okay, so this is the top box, 43 litre top box, which makes it bigger than the BMW Touratech one, but a similar size to most of the others. It'll take a single full face helmet. The construction is exactly the same, so two millimetre aluminium welded construction. Um, if I open the front catch here, exactly the same catches, again, the same key throughout. Um, but if I just then open the lid, again, it's a friction 
a friction hinge. I just love that. It just makes such a difference to the feel of the quality. Now, if we just have a quick look at this still, you'll see that this one is predominantly welded inside, but it does actually have a, a base in the bottom which um, is sealed with a with a sealant as we can see and that's obviously where they need to get the plate to mount it now one of the things I would say about the top box which it's wrong to say it was slightly disappointing maybe I didn't do my research enough but I was hoping that this would actually just bolt directly onto the rack on the BMW R1250 GS Adventure unfortunately it doesn't um, so what that means is is that it actually comes with this mounting plate and the mounting plate, as we can see here, um, it has realistically three mounting points. The rack will go through here, through here, and through these two here. Um, and that will then sit on the bike. So I'm now, you're now looking at the back of the bike and that will be bolted onto, bolted onto there. And then the, the box itself just slides onto these, onto these lugs here. Um, and then this um, latch here, will then latch down onto this here. Obviously when I've got the bike, I'll show you it being fitted to the bike, but that's the rack. And then if we turn the box up on its face, then you can see from there the fitting points, the four fitting points that slide onto it. Again, very well made, very good construction. And in fact, I've bought exactly the same accessories for the box as I bought for the panniers. Um, so effectively, if I pull the rack to one side, I've got the, 43 litre uh, box liner. So again, it's a um, Cordura fabric um, with strong zips, very good quality. They do feel really good quality. And also the lid bag, exactly the same. These aren't opened yet, um, but you've already seen one open for the pannier. And that again has the fittings in it that fit itself to the lids, the lid screws here, which we'll show you a bit later. I bought the handle for the box. So again, I'll show it you on the front, but it'll actually go on the back. Um, that fits across those screws there to give you a carrying handle. Um, I'm very kind to my pillion passengers. So I also bought the, the backrest. Now let me just turn the box round so that you can see the back of it. Um, most of you will find out that if you've ever taken a pillion passenger, they will, they will pretty much always complain either about these fittings here or about the hinges. So um, I'm not quite sure which way this goes up, but we'll presume it goes that way. And we will presume it fits. We need to stand up, do all sorts for you guys, um, but it'll f effectively go somewhere like here. Now, the worrying thing for me is I've got to drill it. It's not that I can't drill holes, but I don't like drilling holes in anything, but it does come with a, with a template, which I'll cut out and I'll probably take the bolts out of the lid here so I've removed the lid and then just tape it to it and, and centre punch them. So it at least comes with a template. And then once again, I've bought from the same person the kit of the uh, rubber mats for the top, which are self-adhesive. And we will see in a moment one being stuck to the top, either of this top box or of the pannier. But again, it's purpose cut for the Boomot Defender Evo system. So I'm just thinking there that if I do lash anything to the box or anything else, I'm not damaging the paintwork, it's just, and that too being dimpled would also help to stop it sliding and the like. So that's the, that's the top box. Not a huge amount more to say about the features than I've already said about them for the, for the panniers, but very strong, very tough, and made for the brave. Um, <laughs> Not quite sure what that is, but hey. Now we'll take a look at the toolbox, which I've also bought for the Boomot Defender Evo system, and then we'll show you the twist in the tail. We will come on to fit in these bits in a minute, and I will give you the prices that I paid for these units, so stay around. So here's the toolbox. Um, I don't think I could probably class this as the uh, Boomop Defender Evo top box. I think it is the Boomop Defender top box because there's nothing um, rounded or curved or styled about the, the toolbox at all. But at the end of the day, it sits inside the left-hand pannier. Um, so the left-hand pannier would normally cover this. This will be obviously to the outside. And you can see exactly the same brackets here to fit that to the BMW scaffolding, so it'll, it'll, it'll mount here and here, 
on the inside of the left hand pannier. Once again it's a standard key, let me just find a key. As if by magic I have a key, same key again. So if I turn that to the horizontal position is always open on every single lock, then literally this lid just comes off. So we can see there, hopefully, that it's got a sealed uh, rubber gasket on it. And you can see too that the locks, you know, they're not the best, but at the end of the day, uh, as I say, if a criminal wants it, they'll have it. Um, why people can't buy their own, I'll never know. But anyway, that's the, that's the box and it quite simply drops into the lug at the bottom, closes up and locks. And I don't know again whether you can see, but that's just the inside of the box, fully welded. I guess fully waterproof, but the great thing about it is whilst I always found room in my Vario panniers for my toolkit, it's nice to have a separate place to put it. And maybe that'll be a video I'll do shortly with the tools that I actually take with me. So there we are, that's the, that's the toolbox. And now we will show you the curveball. <laughs> and there it is, a total indulgence. And whether I'll ever get to use it or not, I don't know. But the Adventure Bike Shop did me a very, very good deal. Um, they matched the price that I could find anywhere on the internet. So here is the Givy Trekker Outback top box, 58 litre. It's a huge top box. It does take two full face helmets. So my uh, showy Neotech 2 helmet, which is the flip, white flip lid one. You've all seen me riding it on various videos. Um, I can fit those side by side in there. So the two that I have can fit side by side. Um, it is a huge box. As you can see though, it's got these bars. I do like that. That's an, a nice sort of finishing touch, these two bars. It's got lashing points here, 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 and here, which would probably match the Beaumont corner lashings, um, which is fine. But the great thing about this is you've got something to lift it with. Now, obviously, now I know that the Beaumont one doesn't fit the BMW rack directly, which is what I hoped it might do. It does mean that I've got quite a little bit of work to do to actually swap the boxes over and I'd want to be doing it because I think on the, uh, on the uh, Beaumont rack is about eight and I think it's probably about eight or so on the rack that comes with this one too. So um, it's, it's something that I will um, do occasionally possibly or possibly never at all. Bit of an indulgence, but I was so wed to this when I looked at the Givy system that when I switched for what I believed were the right reasons, the quality reasons, the simplicity reasons of the Beaumont uh, luggage system, I still felt I had to have this box. Let's take a look inside. So here's the key for the Trekker Outback unit now. Of course, it's a different key from the rest of the, the Beaumont. So obviously, if I am taking this box with me, I'm having to carry one extra key. So it's the bike key, it's the Beaumont key, and it's the Trekker key. Interestingly, and I, I have no idea why they do it, it must save them about three pence. But we have a good key with a lovely plastic bit on it, and then we have a spare key with no plastic. All the same, there we are. Um, it is much more substantial than the Beaumont, and I think if the Beaumont could have this, it would make a big, big difference. Um, but let's just put it in and take a look. Turn it horizontally, the catch will then release. Um, this doesn't sort of go anywhere, it just sits on the plastic bit, so I don't think that's quite as nice as the Beaumont. Um, but there it is. The lid obviously is not a friction hinge, and that's slightly worrying. Obviously, it's retained here, no trouble, but if that were to catch the wind, that's that's a fair old whack about to come down on your fingers. But anyway, I like it. Um, the seal is not as good and consequently this box is only ever sold as dust and water resistant, not dust and water proof as the Beaumont ones are. Yet to be proven and at the end of the day I'm not going to be riding around in water anyway. Um, I try not even to ride in the rain unless I can help it. Um, but it is huge um, and you can, as I say, get two full face helmets. What I've also bought in exactly the same way as the other one is I've bought the backrest. So there's the two piece backrest for the, for the um, Givy unit, which is an E172 um, above the hinge and below the hinge. But these are actually self adhesive. So no need to drill the box, which is actually something I like. And we'll put that back in this nice little Jibby box, which probably costs a couple of quid. Um, and then in here, we've got all of the 
fittings and the kit for the for the monoplate adapter. So there's the monoplate adapter. It's got some brackets and stuff to go with it. Um, it's an indulgence, go with me. Um, but I do really like this box. You may well find that I keep this box on, but I just think when you're not going anywhere, the smaller box would be that much nicer with no panniers, you know, that, that type of thing. But let's wait till we get the bike and then we'll make a decision. I am led to believe, by the way, that the Boomot lids, which open outwards, as we know, and sideways, will still open with this box on, which is something I'm hoping, because otherwise you're gonna have to flip the top box off before you open the panniers, but anyway. So, so that runs down what I've bought for the system, and now we'll just go through the fitting on one of the panniers of the handle, the inner lid, uh, the inner lid bag uh, retainers, the carrying strap, and the reflective strip. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so here we go. It's a tricky piece of camera work because I'm trying to give you something from above and something from the side so that you can see. But whatever, I'll take some stills afterwards so you can see them. Pretty well all the fixings on here are three millimeter hex, so three millimeter hex screwdriver and an eight millimeter uh, socket to, to cover the nuts. So the first thing we're gonna do is to fit the uh, carry handle and that fits um, across the back here, so it's this bolt here, the bolt in the bottom, the bolt in the bottom, and the bolt in the back, because I'm gonna put the carry handle to the inside. So, first thing we'll do then is rattle those screws out, because I'm gonna get replacement screws for these. I'll speed all this up so you don't need to watch the pain of me dealing with the tools. So there's the actual piece we're going to fit. Um, it's, it's realistically could go either way, but this side just feels a bit rougher. This has a very nice seam on it. You'll also notice that the webbing here has been obviously um, drilled to allow the screws, but it's been melted either side to stop it fraying as well. And we're going to fit that on with one of the washers and the longer screws that they provide with the with the washer through there so that the head doesn't pull through. So we'll get, we'll speed this up. So, there we have it. If I turn it round, Hopefully you can see there, fitted here and on the top here. And we now have a nice tight webbing handle to carry the box with. So that's the number one fitting. What I would say to you is the inner bag is gonna be held by the other mount on these corner brackets. So I would suggest that you do them separately if you're going to do them, because now these brackets won't fall off when I take that last one out. So we'll move on to that. Okay. So here's the strap we're going to fit, um, Y shape on either end, and it's these little pieces here that will fit onto the uh, screws and the nuts inside, and we'll show you that with a still once we've finished it. So again, speed it up, we'll get it fitted. Okay, and just so that you can see, um, these are the different screws, so hopefully you can see there the ones they supply you with are about two or three threads longer than the ones that came out. So that's it fitted. Obviously it is adjustable, so it looks a bit baggy at the moment, um, but we'll just undo the clasp. We'll then get the lid bag and drop it in. And then 
do up the clasps. I'm not going to. Uh, I'm not going to adjust them at the moment because obviously the bag would normally be fuller than this. We'll show you a few stills now about how those brackets have all fitted together inside so that you can see that too. Okay, he says very much crouching down. Um, this is the, the notched box here, so this is obviously the front leading edge of the box. Um, so that one's going to have the white sticker on it, and then we'll put the red one on the reverse side. So let's take a look at that. I've got myself a nice microfiber cloth here. Um, I should maybe get some alcohol wipes. The, the person who does these panels at the top supplies alcohol wipes, but to be honest, these are not too bad and I don't think they've got too much preservative on them so I'm just going to give it a good wipe off with the microfiber and then I can find the edge of this there we go so just take a couple of inches down and then try and line her up as best I can central somewhere near there and then we should be able to just gradually making sure we don't go too much out of line make sure we don't get any bubbles as we go certainly at the edges for sure so because that's where you're going to get ingress of dirt and grease and stuff so beautifully done if only I say it myself so that's the that's the white one we'll turn the box around and do the red one so here's the red face this is obviously the rear of the bike so again let's give it a good wipe down with a clean microfiber just to make sure there's not anything untoward on there. As I say, if you feel so, just use an alcohol wipe or something similar. We've probably all got lots of alcohol around us at the moment. Whether that be because we're staying in and drinking or whether that be because we're sanitizing. So just easing the backing paper off. Again, lining up as centrally as we can, like so. And then it should be a simply a matter of sliding down, just making sure that we don't get any bubbles. Like so. Again, particular attention to the edges. And there we go. The reflective strips are in place. Lastly, we're gonna put the panel on the top and then we'll run through the costs. Um, I'm gonna alcohol wipe the top because he's given me alcohol wipes for it. And then we're gonna fit this laser cut panel. We will do some still pictures anyway when we've done these. So um, there's the alcohol wipe. Take that out, these are a decent sheet, decent size. And I think this is more if the pannier had already been used, but I'll just give it a wipe down just to make sure, like so. And then we'll just peel the corner off as we did with the, whoops, as we did with the reflective strips. Just starter. In fact, I may just go past that laser cut because as it's done there, look, it doesn't very peel very well. So there we go. So now we'll just line this up on top. Like so 
and then gradually and carefully withdraw backing paper making sure again there's no bubbles in it just got to tuck it underneath the handle there may, may well have fitted these before really but um, there we go like so so just give it a good push down all the way around the outside it's got some fierce adhesive on it actually so I don't actually see that being anything of a problem. Yeah, just go all the way round with my thumb. As I say, I'll put a link to these on the description below. So there we have it. We'll give you a couple of still pictures of that so that you can see it, but uh, that's the top fitted to the pannier. So that's all the accessories fitted to the pannier and I'll do exactly the same with the other pannier and the top boxes. So now we'll get on to the prices. Okay, so that was the fitting of all of the stuff. Now let's get on to the prices. I bought all of the Boomot cases from the sole distributor in the UK, which was the Adventure Bike Shop in Suffolk, and there'll be a link to their website down below. They did have a, an offer on during August, and there's still a few days of August to go yet, but that was a 10% off any purchases using the code STAY SAFE, uppercase or one word if you're hoping to use it in the UK. If you don't know who your distributor is for Boomot Panniers, then you can look that up on the Boomot website and you can order from them direct as well if you wanted to, but their link again will be down in the description. But um, I'm very pleased with the Adventure Bike Shop. The stuff got here in one piece, one piece, undamaged, nicely packed, delivered on time. And as I say, they did me some, some very, very good prices, not just on the Boomot, but they matched all of the Jivy three items, the case, the rack, and the backrest for the best price I could get anywhere on the internet. So these prices are what I paid. Can't guarantee you'll pay them, but these are the prices that I paid. Let's run down them. The Boomot Defender 39 litre right hand case, that's this case you see in front of you, uh, £314.55. Its brother, the left hand case, the 45 litre Boomot Defender Evo, was £314.55. Now, in fact, that's not true. The pair of them were double that and I've just halved it to arrive at the single prices. So if you were buying just the 39, you might pay differently for it against the 45, but uh, I bought the pair and I've just halved it. Uh, the Boomot Defender Evo 43 litre top box. Now, as I said to you, I was a bit confused with the mounting plate there. So I paid £337.50 for what I thought was the box to fit on the BMW racking. But actually that came with the plate. So the box is £261 and the plate is £76.50. The backrest for that box was £37.80. Uh, the toolbox, the Boomot Defender aluminium toolbox was £99. Then we get on to the three Jivy items. The Jivy Defend, sorry, the Jivy Trekker Outback 58 litre top box, my monolith Indulgence, £324.98. The Givy Trekker Outback Mono Key Rack was £119.99, and the backrest for that box, £59.87. Now, as I say, they match the best price I could find on the internet there, so really chuffed. Then we look at the Boomot accessories. So the 41 litre notched inner bag, Kujura inner bag, that's for this box that you see in front of you, was 39.60. The 45 litre non-notched, basically square inner bag for the other box was the same price, 39.60. The Boomot Defender Evo 45 litre lid bags for the panniers. Now, as I've said to you, both of these lids are the same. The 45 litre lid is the same as the 39 litre lid because it comes out to that dimension. So I bought two of those at 41.40 each, a total of 82.80. And the 43 litre in a bag for the top box, 41.40. The lid bag for the top box, 42.30. The web carrying handles for the panniers, they're both the same, so two of those at nine pounds each was 18 quid. The Evo top box wedding, uh, webbing carrying handle is slightly shorter than the pannier ones at nine pounds. 
and the white reflective strips at nine pounds. Now you'll see I've put the red ones at free, zero. That's because um, I rang the adventure bike shop to add them, realizing that really I should have white on the front and red on the back. And I'd only ordered white and he said, listen, we'll just throw them in. So the total price of my system and the extra Jivy box was £1,899 and 4p. Now, that's probably about £300 more than the BMW two panniers and top box. No toolbox, no accessories, no inner bags, no huge monolith Jivy box for the top, no Jivy rack and, and no um, backrest for the Jivy box. So all in all, it's a pretty good deal for what I believe are probably better quality boxes than the Touratech BMW. But I'm sure you'll have your uh, answers to that, which you can put down below. Now, I hope you've liked the video. We'll look forward to the bike coming in a couple of weeks and I'll fit some of this to it and we'll show you the reveal and a, and a first ride on that, hopefully. So I'd like you to stay safe, ride safe, stay out the way of this awful coronavirus. And if you've liked the video, give me a thumbs up, that really helps. If you like what you see and you've maybe looked at some of the other videos that I've done about changing my GS, which I'll, which I'll put up here, or some of the other videos, then if you feel like you'd like to, just subscribe to the channel, that too would be great. Comments, always welcome, and I try and respond to as many as I can. We'll see you again soon, goodbye.